Hi, this is Charlene Mosier from Sound Sewing Silverdale, Washington and Foff Crave Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington. Today we're going to uh, unbox a brand new Foff Power Quilter 1600 and set it up for you guys and give you a demo. This is a sit down uh, mid arm quilting machine with a built in stitch re regulator. It comes in two boxes. The very big box is actually the machine and the second box, which is the first box we're going to open up, is the table. So let's go ahead and open this up and show you how to set it up. So the first thing we're going to do is we laid the box down on its back with this logo up. It most likely will have uh, strapping on it. We just cut the strapping off and then we made sure to cut the tape along the sides so that we could pull the lid right off. So this is the top with the logo. So, and we'll get the other side. Pull it directly off. Oh, and, yeah, oh more boxes. More boxes. <laughs> That's okay. So what I'm going to tell you to do is let's go ahead and take out all the pieces. You're going to want to look for the instructions. It does come with a wedge of um, wood and I know that seems kind of strange but you need to have that so don't throw it in your fireplace yet. You need it. Okay so let's go ahead and get these all out and then we'll show you what's inside all these. All right so what we have here so far is uh, the legs that you saw that were not boxed in there are uh, well they're legs I just told you that but they're the upper part of the legs. In the skinny flat box when I opened this up I invest investigated that they are the upper legs and it looks like the machine, the upper legs and then the machine base where the machine will sit on the table. Then in this box, we have the rest of the table, okay? So quite a bit going on here. So we got the rest of the table. It's heavy. I lift. That was the right side I gave you. This is the left side, but that's okay. We'll show you how I know that when we get a little bit closer to this. But also in that bigger box, you would have found all the hardware. So the, the feet for the bottom of the table and all the hardware to put together the actual table itself. Oh, was I out of the clip? Yeah. Okay. So then I've also removed the instructions. Destructions. Instructions. We're not <laughs> disabling, we're enabling. That's no, they're true. destructive when you don't read them. <laughs> that is true. Okay. So the first thing we are going to want is we are going to want the actual table itself, the right and the left side, and the platform. So I'm going to get those out. Then the next thing the instructions tell us that we need, that I'm on page five of the instructions. So we want the left table assembly, the right table assembly, the machine standard plate, four screws, and M8 and 12 of another screw there. So let me get that all together and then we'll show you how to assemble that part. Alright, so we have the two and I have them already set up the left sides on the left side and the right sides on the right. And how you know that is on the back of these, the top of the tables, you have what I would call the wings that are sticking out here. They're, they obviously stick out farther. They have to be on the back side of the table because that's where your machine uh, is the supports for your machine. And then this table that goes between them that will be the bed of the machine, you got to have the flanges down. But by doing that way, we won't be able to see on how to get this assembled. So we basically got to flip this. So to flip it over, I gotta pretend that it's attached. So my right side is gonna get flipped and then pushed over to the left. And then my left side is gonna to move to the right and get flipped. So there's still the same thing. It's just I'm pretending like I flipped the whole table like it was already attached. So they're upside down right now. And again, the flanges, so the easiest way is to turn them upside down, make sure the flanges are pointing towards each other in the middle. And this piece, the flanges, the wings here, let me, I believe that these wings have to go this, 
these wings have to go down. Okay, so again, I'm talking about these on the setter machine platform. But let me confer with the instructions to make sure that is correct. All right, so we need the Allen wrench that comes with it. And then there's a whole bunch of these uh, smaller ones. Now, I will tell you, when we were looking at the instructions, is that they showed that we should have had 30 of another smaller screw, and I couldn't find them. And finally, I read the instructions and figured out they're already pre-assembled. Those screws are actually already on our table itself. So they're listed, but they've already assembled it. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is... Oops. You went out of frame. Okay. Did I go out of frame? Sorry. Okay, there you go. We need to make sure there are two screw holes on each side of this of this machine plate. And then there are, on the left and the right sides, there are these oval screw holes here. So we're going to take one of these screws, go ahead and insert into the oval. Let me put two in that oval. I'm going to just push this one out of the way real quick. And I line these up. And that nice? They pushed up. So I'm turning them to the right, so just like if you were to turn, put the lid on a jar, and I'm just going to kind of finger tighten them now. Okay, and then my daughter will put on the other side and kind of get those lined up as well. This plate will have to be adjusted later, so that's okay. So just do a finger adjustment because it will get adjusted according to the machine that we put on here, which will be the Power Quilter 1600. So again, just finger tighten it because we are going to have to assemble that later. The next part. Big legs are now going to get put in. So, on the big legs, you'll find that they have these. Am I in the in the picture, Ann? Yeah, but here, let me. So on the big legs, you'll have these clamps. These are for when we put the other set of legs on them that we could ch change the height of the table. So these have to go towards the center of the table. So that is the front legs. Then if I take the back legs, they too will go towards the center of the table. Ow. <laughs> Don't do that. So again, these latches are facing each other in the middle. Okay, so we're going to get, so there'll be two screws on each side of each leg that we need to put in. Same screws we used before. These, once you get them in, you are going to want to use the Allen wrench to tighten them. How are you doing over there, kiddo? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> now get them nice and tight. We want these nice and tight because the machine and the vibration of the machine, we want to make sure that these screws that we're putting in now are not going to vibrate out. Um, I would suggest periodically checking them. And when I say periodically, like if, you're, if you've used it a lot, you've made several quilts, maybe just, and you notice there's a swing in your table, go check these screws. Um, I've never had to tighten them, but you know, if you don't get them tight enough, they can vibrate. So just every once in a while is a good check. What's next? The next piece that we need to do is we have these holes here that, that you have four inner holes right in here. 
And so these are going to take these really long, these really long screws and two washers on, well, four long screws and four washers. And you'll find that you have, and it's a, the inner holes. So we're going to put those right in here, and then we're going to tighten those in. Again, this is to help give strength to the table. So if you're having a hard time putting them in, what I recommend doing is turning them to the left, unscrew them, and unscrew them for a little bit, for a little while, until the the threads line up, and then you start tightening them. Because they should be too, you should be able to tighten them pretty far and not have to force it. So sometimes you have to go to the left to get them tight, get them lined up. Then at that point, go ahead and use your wrench. I put together a whole L-shaped desk and I can't put one of these together with you. I make you nervous? differences between metal and wood I guess <laughs> so again just make sure these are nice nice and tight because again there's a lot of vibration to this machine this machine goes really fast when you quilt which is fantastic I can't wait so we want this to be as solid as possible so this plate the first one we put in again we left it not loosey-goosey but it was only a finger tight because we are going to have to change those and we don't want them too tight but putting the legs in get them tight the next thing we're going to do is we are now going to put the next set of legs in. So these first ones that were not in a box went across the table. These next ones are going to go sideways now. Here, Ann. Okay. So on these tables, how do you know which way these legs, how do they go? Good question. Again, this is the back of my table. This is the front of my table. So we want, with this leg, this extra length out to be going towards the front, okay? And the short one to the back. The reason why is if I push this up towards a wall, we want it to be the same width of the back of our table. So we're gonna put this in, but you're going to find it's not going to want to fall. You have to loose, you have to, these clamps that we had, you kind of have to loosen them. Well, you gotta pinch them and then slowly bring them down. <laughs> you might want help so they, well, I don't think that's a smart way to do it, Ann. You wanna put your head on it, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so you do have these holes. It's, <laughs> want some help? All right, Ann. Yep, we're not here. Okay, one, two, three, four. I'm going to go down okay, until I have four holes showing. Okay, so one, two, three, four. No. So I'm making sure that I have four holes here. You, you're going to have it adjusted for different heights, but that is where I'm going to preliminarily adjust it on both sides. Okay, so now we're ready to put on our feet, but you probably have noticed that you have this long skinny little guy that was in that box as well. Um, so this goes on the back side, right across, and it will line up to, with the two back side feet holes. And so these are the feet. And these are leveling feet, so if you find that you are on an uneven surface, these are the ones that you are going to screw in. Our floor is pretty level, so I'm going to just screw them all in. So you make sure you have this metal piece down first, and then go ahead and screw these in and screw them in nice and tight. If you do have an uneven floor, you're just going to need to use a leveler and play with these feet to level it out. And if that's the case, I really recommend having two people do it together. Do we flip it now? It's saying to use a wrench to tighten these if needed. Um, we must have had the wrench, but if you guys are familiar with, that's not the wrench, Ann, that's an Allen screw. A wrench is where it's open. Yeah, 
Yeah. And he can do it. So ours is probably somewhere on our floor somewhere. For those of you who are familiar with our carpet in our stores, yeah, you don't drop horrible. A, yeah, you don't drop a screw on one of these because you do lose them. <laughs> All right, we're going to flip the table. Yes. So let's go ahead and flip it this way and then turn it. So we're going to flip it carefully. No, mom, we're going to carefully. We're, <laughs> we're going to yeet it. <laughs> and let's. That is high. <laughs> Glad we didn't do it the other way. So now we're going to turn. Which way are you going to go? That is high. That's fine. That was at number four, but remember that it's totally adjustable. All right, so let me clean up my mess a little bit and then we will start showing you the finishing of getting it all set up. Okay, so now in the instructions, they're telling us to consider the height of the table. And I know I had told you that I was placing it at four on, on down below where you saw earlier in the video. But how to do your height is you are going to want to get your sewing chair out. Now my sewing chair I have here has an airlift in it. So if I was to sit down and I'm going to sew at this, when I sew, um, actually it's not as high as I thought it was, but it is high for me. You do need to be at a comfortable, comfortable uh, hands down, but you also keep in mind that you are going to be moving, so you're going to be lifting your shoulders. So we do need to lower it a little bit more. I'm probably going to lower it at least one notch, if not two, but keep in mind your chair might be an airless, so you can lift it up and you can go down as well. So you can also adjust according to what you need, but I just feel this is a little too high. So it does take two people. So, um, Ann, go ahead and come over. And what we're going to do is Anne is going to hold it here and I'm going to go under the table and grab those clips and we're going to bring it down one set on both sides and then we'll check it and then do the adjustment as needed. So I have the clips. Let's come down. Oop, that came down too. <laughs> no, no, no. Come down. Okay. Come on the other side. I got my mother under the table. You do. I'll tell ya. Okay, come down. One more. Ooh. <laughs> it's laying on me. Gosh, Mom, you're short. Next time, make your child get under there. <laughs> no, I'm taller than you. That's not fair. That's more comfortable for me. I feel taller. My I, my arms before were, were, I was lifting my shoulders. My shoulders are relaxed. My elbows are down. I'm at an L shape. Now I can move this. And if I need to adjust it all, I can do it with my chair. Now the next thing we're going to end up doing is adjusting this platform for the machine, which means we need to unpack the machine now. So we're going to reset the camera over at the machine and we'll unpack it. Well, all right. So here we are with the, the machine box. Now the machine box is staples, so please be very, very careful with opening up because these are very, very big staples. And um, with opening up a lot of boxes, I have caught my skin on them a couple times and it don't feel good. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this, this baby up. So I just open up one side. There is a seam going across the top, so I'm going to open up the other side. These machines are packed really well. Okay, Ooh, and yeah, I just got myself. Careful of those staples. Okay, so with the seam going across the top, I'm going to help pop this up. I got something in my eye. If you have a box cutter, you can use it. Just, just, just be very careful if you are. <laughs> that might happen to you. Ribbon. There we go. Get angry. <laughs> Pretend it's Christmas. Well, they glued this one well. I mean, they always glue them really well, but this one, I think. Pretend it's your brand new countertop and you got to rip into it. There you go. Motivation. There we go. That's a weird looking machine. <laughs> it is. So the machine is in the pink wrapper itself. So I am going to lay it down going forward. Just nice and careful. Bring it down. This piece that's under the machine is the piece that goes to the table still that we're going to get to later, which is your stitch regulator. Really cool. I can't wait to try this out. Okay, the machine. Woohoo, the beautiful machine. Look at that. So in here, we're going to have quite a bit. Okay. 
Have you seen this one yet, Mom? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> Get on in here, Anne. Okay, so here's the machine. So you have the machine again, it's very well packed. In the middle of the machine, you are going to have the thread stand. So let's go ahead and get that put on a table out of our way. Over on the top right, if, if you see the blue and the FOF logo on your top right, will be your bobbin winder. This bobbin winder can sit anywhere you want, okay? It can, mine always sits on my table, but you can actually put this anywhere you want in your sewing room and be able to wind your bobbins at any time. So let's go ahead and put that aside. Your foot control. And I just want to point out it is a kind of like a comport foot control. If you guys remember those. Hey mom, I figured out how to uh, focus on your screen. Thank you. You tap it. You show me that later. <laughs> <laughs> I've been needing that. <laughs> um this has a wire harness and stuff in it. I am assuming this has to do with the regulator still, okay? We will open up this when we're ready, but I'm assuming this has to do with the regulator. Then we get into our big bag of goodies. <laughs> oh, they gave you thread, look at that. So they gave us a package of needles, which your needles for this machine take a 134R. Any one of your Foff or Viking dealers with the Inspira needles should have these for you, so they should be very easy for you to find. Because with uh, bobbins, you do have, it looks like it has another foot with it, maybe a ruler foot, we'll investigate that. And then some tools that you need to work on the machine. Your bobbin case will be in here and your brush. Your power cord. And it looks like they're giving you some starter thread. Looks like we got King Tut and not sure what the other one is, but um, looks like it's fine quilting thread by uh, Superior. And then of course they're going to give you a Superior brochure in here. Um, this is again a new machine. This just might be the the what you get when you first get the machine for for. Um, I don't know, but I was surprised to see that. And then of course there is a uh, DVD in here by Superior as well, probably about their threads and stuff. That'll be fun to look at. And then your user manual. Oh, I went to the machine. Oh, <laughs> and then your user manual. So all right here for the Grand Quilter 1600 stationary quilting machine. All right, so I am going to uh, get this completely out and then we'll meet you back at the table. Okay, so now that we have the machine all unpacked, we next need to uh, unpack the stitch regulator table, which was located under the machine in its foam. So you just, with the label up, just open up the top here, and you'll find in here this is black foam, but there is, if you reach, this acts like a handle. And it's so you can come in and start pulling this out. I'll use my feet to help. Okay, and there's the instructions to know how to insert to our table. It's a good thing my cats aren't here. They would <laughs> love that. And here is the stitch regulator table, okay? So I'm gonna grab the instructions and then we're going to show you how to level this out and insert your stitch regulator table. Okay, so the table's together. Anna and I have flipped it over. And uh, just a reminder, because I can't remember if I told you guys this, is this platform in the middle needs to be raised to the highest position. So as we've been following along, I did tell you about this piece of wood that came with it and not to get rid of it. And at this point, with the original table instructions, is when this piece of wood would come into play, unless you're using the Power Quilter 1600 or the Platinum Viking version of it. And at that point, we don't need this piece anymore. So I believe the machines that use this to uh, stabilize itself is, I believe the Handy Quilter uses it and um, some of the other machines. So again, if you have the Foff or the Viking one from your local dealer with this table, you don't need this really. Now that I got to the part of the instructions, I understand that. So on the last page of the table setup is where they're talking about this, and we're just going to skip that because now we're going to go to the setup with the stitch regulator, okay? So we just had to, again, put this platform to its highest 
uh, point and make sure that we anchor it uh, pretty tight, all four corners. Hi. <laughs> and then we are going to take the machine and we are going to put the machine from the box in, making sure we want to make sure that all four of the rubber feet of the machine is sitting on the actual platform, okay? That it is sitting centered this way, and the hand wheel itself way back here is just going to be inside the table, okay? So all four rubber legs on there. You have these flanges here that will allow you to bring the machine in, and that's where the stitch regulator table is going to uh, lock in. All right. Let so me, uh, let me take a look at. Let me take a look. Uh, what you just talked about. So, hand wheel right here, just inside here. Now we have the stitch regulator table right here, and we so it's this guy right here. All right. We are going to gently turn it upside down and put it directly flat. You have two cables coming out. And this threw us the first time because we have two, what well, known as COM ports. If you're used to com older computers, we had these COM ports way back for our printers and our monitors and stuff. Well, that's what technologists use. You have one COM port that's male, one COM port that's female. One is to go to the foot control and one is to go to the machine, okay? When we first uh, unboxed this and took a look, we know that we were looking for two COM ports on the back of the machine, and no, there isn't. There's one to the foot control, one to the machine. So just to clarify that. The next thing we're going to do is these, this is where the stitch regulator is, way over here. I don't know if you can see that in. Kind of see it. Okay. So these are the back side of the stitch regulator. And so we want to be very careful about installing that we don't bump these and we don't bump these cables, okay? So you want to be very ginger with this. And you also have a ribbon cable underneath that have been taped into place. But we do have these two screws here that we do need to attach these guys to that came with it. And so we're going to put this on and we're going to tighten them. And we want there to be about a quarter inch space between this guy and the screw, just about. So it has room to clear. So not very far, just a little bit, okay? All right. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take this table and these tables, and I'm gonna bring the tables back because I want the cables to come in one at a time here and lie between, okay, that's not good. <laughs> Let's go underneath. Let's go underneath. Um, they need to come and lie next to the machine going straight back. It was easier a moment ago until we press record. <laughs> that cable fed under there. Now I want this one with this big comp port trying to go under the machine also fed. Not under the machine. Thank you. Again, not under the machine. Just straight back. Okay? Line next to the machine straight back. Really shouldn't be that hard, but I'm going to take this and twist it, okay, all right, now we're going to come in and gently slide this back, all right. All right, I got ahead of myself, sorry, I forgot to tell you something when I, <laughs> when I had you turn in these screws, so I've taken this back out and laid it over to the side so my wires are still back there. And we got to take off these screws because these have to come back. And so these here actually have to fold back like this. And then these get put in about a quarter inch from the thing. Uh, 
Okay. Then we're going to take it and bring it over. Line it up. Can make sure my wires are underneath and pop that in. So see now that wants to hold. Then I can tighten these underneath. But righty tighty, lefty loosey, just undid them. So then if I screw this in, I just undid them both. Because <laughs> this will now. are upside down okay so see now when I tighten this this is going to stay now okay so the stitch regular is now locked into place sorry about that that was an easy fix right the other thing is my machine's a little high here so I need to loosen the platform underneath because I want the machine to be level okay so that's done under here I have there's these these platform screws that we did earlier. Okay, so I gotta come and loosen it a bit. I'm gonna tighten that one. So I'm just loosening a little bit for it to drop a little naturally. There we go. I'll do that one again. There we go. Okay, see how it's starting to fall into place? Don't loosen it too much to allow it to do that because um, Technically should take off. Oh, let me take off my mask. Sorry. <laughs> you should technically take the machine off to do this, but then we're kind of guessing. So on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to try to bring it down a little like that and tighten it. Same with this one. Bring this one down just a bit. Tighten it. All right, it took a little work to get this leveled, and um, if I had read just one step farther in the instructions, which I just read now that Ann and I are done, is basically you need to have someone help lift this and the machine so you could adjust this part of the table and lift the other two. If you've got this machine and it's rocking, you have one corner too high, and you kind of kind of figure it out. It's really easy, though, to kind of figure out because when in this state, if you peek underneath, you'll see which foot is not touching. And that's the side you need to raise, <laughs> okay? But it took a little bit of maneuver. It didn't take us long. I only, I don't even think it took us five minutes. Um, and if I had just read that one added little clip, I would have been fine. Mom, if you just read the destructions. I'm trying, but you know, there's a lot of words, and I just kind of fog over why I see a lot of words, because I'm like, I know how to do it. <laughs> you guys like that? All right, so we still have these cables in back, and again, you want the cables running against the machine. Uh, we still have the table tightened in front, and now we have, this is sturdy. I know you can see a wiggle in it, but it's because I'm just wiggling on its flat surface. It's fine. Okay, now let's get the machine all set up. So the first thing we're going to have you do is this package. In the very beginning of this video, I remember telling you guys I didn't know what it was. Well, if I thought about it, I would have known what it is. It's the touch screen that goes right here. So we are going to gently open this and really gently open this. Um, if you're using scissors like I am, just kind of start it to open it up because you don't want to cut the wires in here. There are wires in here. I can see them. So just at the top or where you can see where you don't see the wires, go ahead and come on in here. Oh boy. If you ever had the job of wrapping this, you did good. <laughs> You want it? I want it. Okay, be careful of it. So my daughter's going to open that up. Now she's doing that, we also have our um, our thread stand here. And we're going to need to attach that. It's going to go on the back side away from the logo. Okay? And we'll show you where that goes here in a moment. You also are going to want your foot control, which we're going to plug into the stitch regulator. And what, don't pop those in my ear. Silly kid. And then we want the power cord. And the power cord we are going to want to plug in after we have everything connected. And there's, that's the wire harness. Do you want a wire hard to get out? Look at the little sticky they put in there. Well, again, whoever job this was, they did good. Rude. <laughs> All right, and then we should have some more screws. No? No. Is that all the screws we have? It's bubble wrap. <laughs> no! Okay. Okay, 
so now we're going to sh show you how to install this part. So this part is going to go, there are, you want to go over here? I don't know. There are two screws and two screws. And um, by looking at where they line up, it's going to line up with these top two screws here. Okay, so with those. And in where the wire harness is, there are screws with washers that we are going to need. <coughs> and I would say the washer goes in front of the screw, I'm assuming. And then we're going to put it in this, in this. There's tape in there. Oh, goodness, guys. Here, what my washer? I got another one. Thank you, Ann. Mm -hmm. Where'd your screw go? On my hand. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put, put it in here. Take my other screw. Can you see that, Ann? Mm hmm. Okay. I'm going to put it also in here. Then I'm going to bring these around. Oh, now I can't see. Now you can't see. And I'm just going to start these by hand, okay? So that I can hold this here. Just start this by hand. Your nails look nice today. No, they don't. You, you do. liar. <laughs> no, they look nice today. I've been opening and moving freight all day. I'm sure they're hideous. No. Okay, so now we're just going to come in and tighten these with the Allen wrench. This Allen wrench actually came in the baggie with the needles and the bobbins and all that. And that screen can now tilt. I, 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 you want to rip that off? It's like getting a new cell phone, isn't it? I don't need a new cell phone. I like my cell phone. <laughs> okay, so on the side of the screen, you'll see uh, two ports. So have Ann come over here to show you this. <coughs> You'll see that there's two ports here. The top one is for you to put the small one up for the cable. And this one is for any upgrades we get. So this machine is upgradable. How cool is that? Then we also have the USB port that's going to go plug right in here to feed to the machine, to tell the machine all the information that we're going to tell it. The next thing we have is here are the screws for the um, thread stand. So we're just going to loosen it a bit, them a bit. You don't have to take them out. We just need to loosen them because we're going to put them in the holes and push the thread stand down and then tighten them with the same Allen, uh, I guess this is an Allen wrench. Actually, I think it's a torque wrench. I can hear my husband now. <laughs> All right, so I will go get that and I'll be right back. Okay, so once you get this on here, it should be nice and firm. And don't over tighten it because this is a plastic base and you don't want to crack it. So just get it firm so it's, it, it doesn't move on you, it doesn't rock. All right, now let's start plugging this baby in. So we're going to come over to the other side here. Okay, so I'm going to take the foot control. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on the ground. It's backwards, but it's okay. But the foot control has a male comp port on it, nine pin com port. So we want to take the female nine pin comp port and we're going to put those together. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? And you have these screws on here so you can tighten them into each other so that they stay locked. Okay. And that should be oh, there should be one here. Yep, there is right there. Come on, out of the baggie. There's one in the baggie. Little mine's a little black handled screwdriver. Right here, which is the same one I believe change your needles. So that we can just tighten these together, okay? And that way they don't come apart when you're in bird, when you're uh, free motion quilting or thread painting, whatever you chose to do, choose to do with your machine. Okay, so these are now nice and locked. That does give you a little added extension to the foot control. Now the male nine pin that's remaining to the stitch regulator plugs directly into the machine to give the machine the information it needs from the regulator. And we just tighten that up. Okay. Then your power, pretty simple. Now I will tell you if you have cats or a puppy 
or a full-grown dog or anything that likes to chew on cords or rabbits. if rabbits or if you're not sure all of my machines at home especially these thin wire ones I have a cat at home that just he's very textorial and he really likes wire and he's three and he it doesn't seem to be breaking this habit I have made fabric wraps fabric long tubes and I have covered all of these and he, they won't normally chew on fabric they like the texterity of the the rubber covering of the wire and that's why they do that so by covering with fabric they're most likely not going to do that or if you have a separate sewing room just lock them out of your room okay so we're going to plug that in and now i'm going to go find power and plug in the other end and then we will show you how to thread up your machine Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the bobbin winder. So I've already plugged in the box and I already have it down on the floor. And so I'm just going to plug it right in on the side of the, uh, the bobbin winders right here. You could just plug it in. Now we need to put on our uh, spool pin and our, um, our thread mask. So we do have one baggie that has a washer, a nut, a spool pin, and our uh, little Allen wrench that we are going to need. Okay. So this is where the spool goes, and what it's going to be is it's going to be the washer, the nut. So we're going to put the nut on, right on here, put the washer right on here, and we just throw that in. Get it nice and firm. Easy peasy, right? Okay, now we need to put this one on here. So this is the thread mass, and the thread mass has this ponytail guy here that we need and then we have the the nut and the washer but I don't see them saying what order that I am going to assume I do know that this washer has to come off so we're going to take off this nut okay get that washer and now this is going to go in the front hole right here leave the ponytail on Put the nut back on here. Let's get that all the way up there. And we're going to twirl this on. Doo, 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 doo. If, it, if it's fighting you, if you're putting this on and it's hard to start to twist, then you need to, to stop, okay? Because you do want to um, you do want this to not strip, and this is an easy item to strip. So I'm turning it until the this loop is above the spool pin here. And then I'm going to take the ponytail here and I'm going to bring over kind of an angle so that I can guide it to the guide, the, the tension assembly. So then we need to tighten this. Come on now. <laughs> Let's have this way out. So here we go. Let me bring it way up here so I can get this in here. And kind of tighten it now. I'll bring it down to where I want, which I want about right here, I think. And tighten that. Okay. And then we make sure that that bolt down here is nice and tight as well okay all right so that's the bobbin winder you will find that um, at least every one I have set up has a bobbin or he on it so you have an extra bobbin here which is nice okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to show you how to thread the machine how to wind a bobbin how to install it and what's on your screen all right so I'm going to put a spool on the spool pin put my thread up through the loop come here through what they called the pigtail and then right into the tension assembly itself. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to go through the hole. I like to go through the hole and there's a blade in there, which is kind of nice. So when I put this on here, okay, I'm going to put that directly on there. And I have a speed control from one to 10. I usually wind mine about seven and a half on the top. That's the speed. And you have buttons, green is go, red is stop. So I'm going to press the green one. And as it starts to fill here, I'm gently going to pull my thread to the side, and there inside where I threaded it, in this little guy here, where I threaded it, there's a blade in there. So when I pulled my thread to the side, it cut it. 
Okay, let's go ahead and make it a little bit faster here. Now what this is going to do is you don't have to babysit this while this is winding. You can literally just walk away because when this bobbin gets full, it actually has an automatic stop on it. Okay, I always thread my uh, bobbins the same color as my top. I like them to match. A lot of your long arm quilters will do that. And I want to make sure that we're just a little bit more down there. Okay. I just pushed it down a little bit because I noticed it was, I could have got some more thread at the bottom. Um, a lot of your long arm quilters do like to match because the art of pushing and pulling your fabric can throw your knots even with a perfectly balanced machine. And if you match your threads top and bottom, you're giving your, your tensions the best scenario to keep those knots nice and tight. And if one does throw to one direction, you're not going to be as apt to see it. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is get myself a pair of scissors and we're going to just cut that and we are now going to get in front of the machine and show you guys how to install this. Okay, so now we're getting ready to set up the machine for the first time. And on my table here, I still have these uh, stitch regulators that have these little protectors on them that my daughter didn't take off yet because she didn't realize she could, like she did the screen. No, I realized I could. I just oh, okay. left them alone. So we can take those off so that it can see my fabric. So these are your stitch regulators right here, okay? And I forget, I'm not at home. I don't have a garbage can right there. Off my finger. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, in your baggie of your goodies that have your bobbins and your needles in there, you'll find that there is another baggie that has your bobbin, a bobbin, and a bobbin case, and then also has another foot. There are multiple feet you can get for this machine, and it does come with two. Um, right now, it has the ruler work foot directly on there for using with like the Westerly rulers, is a great one there. If you haven't investigated them, we do sell them in our store. Um, they are fantastic. And then we also have uh, an open toe one, and this one that comes with the machine. And what's fantastic about the open toe is it allows you to see a little bit better while you're trying to do your micro work, which is your real fine tune, uh, small work that you can do. Okay, so that's when you could change it to this foot as well. All right, so go ahead and put that in a safe place along with all your extra bobbins. The other thing that we got with this is you would have also received a 10 package of needles and th this machine takes a 134R. It is a commercial needle. So you're not going to find this over in the sections where they sell your household needles. You are going to need to, um, your dealers should carry this. Um, some, actually some of your uh, commercial companies will also have this because this is a pretty common, common one when it comes to the quilting machines. So 134R. Cannot put household machine needles in here. It will not work. Okay, they do give you a nice lint brush as well to clean things up. Okay. All right. And so we are going to go ahead and open up our bobbin case. And in the bobbin case, there is another bobbin in there that they found. Wasn't that nice of them? We're going to take out that bobbin. And mine has extra oil on it. You probably will find yours has extra oil on it as well. That's okay. You do want to make sure that you, in your manual, tell you where to oil this machine. And you do want to make sure you oil this machine. And if it, it just good, clean sewing machine oil is all you need. And uh, if your machine's starting to pick up a little extra noise by oiling the shuttle hook area, it will help take care of that noise for you, which is really nice. You will notice inside your bobbin case here that you have this blue-like spring in there. That spring has to be there. This machine... Um, according to the brochure, uh, if I read it right, it said 2,100 stitches a minute, but the manual said 2,200 stitches a minute. That's really fast. So when you stop, s stop quilting because of those higher speeds, this spring is going to help pressure the bobbin so it doesn't spin on you and get caught. Okay, so you have to have that in there. Um, I do believe in the past we've been able to get those without the bobbin case to fit in there. I would have to double check that. So I'm going to take the bobbin and you put the thread over the top to the right and I'm going to put the bobbin in and I'm going to come in and you go through just like your normal machine bobbin case. I'm going to go through the hole there. I'm going to bring it around to the tip. See I have some lint there. So that is all the way in the tension and when I pull on it, it pulls clockwise. 
So we're going to get ready to show you how to install the bobbin, but just again, make sure you want to make sure that your bobbin's going clockwise when you're looking at it. Okay, that's that's the design that the machine has. So when I turn this around, you can take the lever. If you take the lever and hold on to it, the bobbin won't drop out. That's the job of the lever, okay? So now we're going to go under the machine to show you how to install this. First couple times, you may want to look under there to try to install it, but you will be able to do this eventually, if not right away, with just feeling, okay? Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right here is where we're going to go with the bobbin case. So I'm just going to bring it directly down underneath here. I'm going to go and I'm going to push it until it locks in. If you use the lever to put it in, you'll never hear that lock. That's why I like to have it just before and push it in. When I hear that lock, I know it's installed. That's it for that. Isn't that easy? Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to thread the machine. I always like to use this spool pin way over here. It's the third one away from me because I feel it's the one that's lined up best with this uh, ponytail here. So the third pin away from me is where I put that. And we do have to go through the antenna make sure the antenna is up all the way. So if you own a serger, same roll with a serger. You have to have this up all the way. It's part of the tensioning. Then I'm going to come here to this little guy here, which I'm going to go through him. So I just curly cued him around. The next thing we're going to do so I'm going to give myself a fresh cut here, is right here we have our first thread guide which has three holes in it. We do have to go through every hole and we go from back to front. So we're going to do the top hole from back to front, the middle hole from back to front, the last hole from back to front. Okay, you have a guide right here that we got to just go ahead and bring this in. I'm going to hold up on my thread down up here because now I'm going to go from into the tension dial. I'm going to go all the way into the tension assembly and then grab that wire. Okay, so let me show you that one more time here. So you have these plates right here. And I'm going to go all the way into those plates. I'm going to bring it around and grab that wire. And then I'm going to go underneath this point so that wire bounces. Okay, and now I feel tension when I pull on it. Then I'm going to go through the take up lever. That's what this is called, the take-up lever. Again, back towards me. Make sure you have your glasses. Yeah, <laughs> I do. And now we have our next uh, pigtail thing here. That then we go right into there. Okay. And now I'm just going to take a stitch. Okay. Now we have a hole directly, a very big hole right here before the needle. That is a must, actually all these guides I'm showing you are a must, but I will tell you this one's definitely a must. I've missed this once and all I did was break threads on me. And then I realized I skipped that hole. And so you have to be in there. So I'm gonna go in that hole, which again is a really large hole. And then our needle, it's the one that came with it. I'm gonna put it in front to back. I tend to like to change my needles when I get a brand new machine, but I am gonna to try to give this one the benefit of the doubt. Um, but if you're having some misstitching, skipping a stitch is breaking a thread a lot, and you know your thread is good, and you know you threaded it right, and you've already done a tension balance, which is what we're getting ready to do, then change your needle, okay? Now these needles do not have a flat to them. They have what's called the scarf, and that's an indentation that goes up in the back of the machine, uh, I mean, of the needle. And that scarf is what points away from you. So the eye points towards you with this indentation or the scarf on the back side. Okay? And your book will really show that to you. So here I have just um, a just a play test fabric. You should always have a warm-up piece. And what I'm going to do now is we are going to show you the machine the screen. Okay, so this is your screen, and in case you need help on know where the on switch for your machine is, it's on the back left-hand side by where you plugged in the power cord. There's a switch there, that's your on switch. And it powers up your screen. So we're on the home page, and so we have M and R. M stands for manual, and R stands for regulator. So when you're on manual, that means it by your speed of your hands and your speed of the machines, you are totally controlling the length and the function of the stitches. Under regulate is when you can go in and set how many stitches per inch you want it to do for you and it will regulate you. 
This next one here, which is the, mine says 850, that must be the default when you first get out of the box, I'm assuming. That is the current speed that you are doing. So this indicates how fast you're doing. The prior machines that we used to have did this by percentage. So instead, this is now telling you how many stitches a minute you are doing instead of what percentage of stitches. The B stands for based. You can do uh, a base function on here, okay? And then these down here, the 50, 550 and the 900, these are called presets, and these are already programmed speeds that you could go in and change. Up here on the top right where it looks like a bobbin, it says 0.0. .0 uh, you actually have a way, and we're not gonna do it today because it's just a real quick how-to, supposedly real quick how-to, is this is going to, you can go in and you can fill a bobbin, install it, and have it record the whole time that that bobbin worked for you until it ran out, and then you save that and what, for a setting for whatever thickness thread you're using, and it will give you an estimate of how much thread you have left. Really cool, I was very excited about that. This next one here is needle up, needle down. It is not an automatic. When you touch the up or the down, it does not happen right away. It's where the needle will stop once you have lifted your foot from the foot control or stop or use the start stop key. The next one down here where it says, mine says 65 and has that little bracket by it, that has to do with the tension. If I change my tension dial here, that number changes. So you can get an idea of how much I, I'm assuming, now this is assumption, I probably will be corrected by somebody, is I'm assuming that's like a poundage weight of how much weight is on the thread. Because that's, I can't imagine what else that number would indicate, but it is the higher the number, the tighter, the lower the number, the looser. So that's really cool. I like that. That was one of my, my new features I liked along with the bobbin in low uh, indicator, uh, where it's not really bobbin low, it's, it's a bobbin low monitor. And then this here is your start stop key. Okay, so I could run this without my foot control, but I'm a big foot control person. If I pick, uh, pick regulate, my screen changes a little bit, and this is where I could do stitches per inch and my speed and, again, poundage and all of that. I'm just going to take you into manual right now, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to leave it on manual. I'm going to leave everything the way it is, and we'll show you how to balance your tensions. All right, so what I'm going to do is I have my top thread threaded here. My bobbin thread is still down below. So I'm going to tap my foot control to have my needle go down. Tap my foot control again, my needle will come up. That way I could come in here and pull up my bobbin thread. That is something we do at the beginning of every quilting free motion that we do. So we know where that bobbin thread is. So we're holding both of them now. I'm going to come in here, just do a little anchor, and I'm just going to go ahead and go. I want to try to get some nice movement here. I'm just going to do a nice, relaxing stipple. Oh, I love this machine. Okay, so just get a nice, good, relaxing stipple. Go ahead and stop. And I am, you can anchor this side as well. So just do a little anchor. Okay, and I'm going to pull this so I get this long tail. So I can clip this tail on the top. I'm going to clip the tails over here I did. And then I'm going to clip, clip the bobbin tail. There are some quilters out there that tell you to go ahead and uh, leave long tails and then you can pull them through and nest them in. I don't do that. But that's just my preference, whatever way you like to do. So from the top as I'm looking here, let's see here. My tensions look pretty good from the top, okay? I'm not seeing a whole lot of knots pulling up at all, so that looks pretty good to me. Then if I turn it over now, and we look on the back, and that's why all my knots are on the back. So one or two things could be happening here. Either my uh, bobbin tension's too tight, or my top tension's too low. So when feeling your bobbin tension, if I feel it was in the machine, I do have somewhat, I, I do have a good drag on it, but not, not too much. I think that feels good. But my top thread probably could be a bit tighter. So I'm going to take my knob. I'm going to take my tension knob here and I'm going to turn it just a little bit. So I was at 85, I just turned it to 100. And I'm going to do this again. Find another spot. And I do do this before I do every, every quilt because your battings can change thickness, which can change what you're doing. If it's been a really hot day or a really cold day, I find that sometimes tensions change because this, this is a spring in here that's, a, that's holding this. Do whatever. 
whatever to try to get some good curves and some good like movement so you could try different things out. That was looking pretty, then I made it look weird. <laughs> That's okay, I'm just warming up. So again, I'm gonna trim this all and we look at the back. And now I see my knots are getting better. They're getting pulled in, but I still have them riding outside a little bit, like on that curve. I still see the knots, and then when I get straight, they lock in. I go to a curve, and the knots are pulling to the back again. So I am going to increase my top thread a little bit more. So I'm at 100 right now, so I'm going to go to about... Oh... Try 110. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Take my stitch and do it again. Okay. Let's see how that one did here. Oh, do do do. Okay. And now they look good to me. My, my tensions are looking good there. And on the top, where is it? This is the last one I did. I'm happy with that, so I'd be ready to go, okay? And your, your different kinds of thickness of threads can also throw your tensions off. You just, you always wanna test it, but you always wanna warm up too. But now I'm ready to pull out my project and just play. So this was, again, just uh, unboxing and unveiling to, of how to set it up. And then once you get it set up and plugged in, you're ready to do a tension balance and you're ready to go. Have a lot of fun. I love this machine and I hope you do too.